As a guide, I know these clients sometimes make the best anglers. They listen, they have patience, and they're always up for a good fight. If you haven't guessed by now, it's ladies' night here on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Welcome to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, and as you can see, we've got all the ladies in the house. Rick, is this your favorite show or what? Absolutely. <laughs> How could it not be? I know, right? We also have Reynas Del Costa here, as well as our guest chef, Taylor Sanders, who we're going to chat with a little later. But Rick, I feel like this is a very special show because we get to celebrate the growth of lady anglers of all ages in the fishing industry. You're absolutely right, Bree. And as I said in the open, you know, I really, some of my best days on the water have been with lady anglers, and it's really an honor to have a night that's dedicated to the lady anglers. I agree. Now, Dave over at the CCA Workbench, I know has raised his daughter Molly on the water, and she's such a cool little nugget, Dave. Yeah. just love her. Yeah, but the reason was I couldn't get the boys to go with me. There you go. Molly went with me all the time. There so. you go. Very, very happy that she has. <laughs> Look at Dave. He gets Dave all warmed up oh, in it. Yeah, <laughs> all right, well, Didn't we've know got... know you are going to pull the Molly card on me. The Molly card. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we've got a lot of reports and fun photos to get to tonight, so why don't we start in the East Region, where I know many lady anglers who are always getting fish in the boat. So let's hear from Mike Holiday on where those fish are. That's the truth, Bree. You know, if, if, if you're female and you like to fish, and particularly if you have a competitive side, just about every tournament has a lady angler division that offers cash and prizes for the top female catch. And there's even some upcoming female-only tournaments. Uh, on October 6th and 7th, there's a ninth annual Blue Water Babes Fish for a Cure tournament. That's out of Sailfish Marina in Palm Beach. And then the following weekend, October 13th and 14th, the Stewart Sailfish Club holds its Saltwater Sisters tournament, both uh, events target kingfish, dolphin, and wahoo, and have billfish divisions as well. And then this weekend is the Stewart Sailfish Club Junior Angler Tournament, which gets a good number of female anglers, and they've done very well in that tournament in past events. If you're a female that's just looking to go fishing or learn more about it, then you might want to spend a day on the water with Marsha Fusner or with Melinda Buckley. They're two outstanding local fishing guides that both happen to be females. And, you know, really, if you're just trying to learn, the best way is to, is to uh, find people who fish and join a fishing club like the West Palm Beach Fishing Club, the Stewart Rod and Reel Club, the Stewart uh, uh, Light Tackle, uh, God, I can't think of it, Stewart Sailfish Club, and then the Fort Pierce Sport Fishing Club. They have regular meetings with guest speakers that offer tips and techniques for targeting fish in your area. So let's move a little bit offshore. The most consistent blue water bite in the region remains for sailfish, particularly from Hope Sound North. The sails are traveling in small packs of two to six fish, and they're working those deep water bait schools and the color changes and the wrecks that are out there in 70 to 120 feet of water. Now they're fish deeper and they're fish shallower, but the boats that are flying, you know, five or six release flags every day, like the unbelievable with Captain VJ Bell, those boats are working the line between a six and eight mile reef which are in that depth. Most of the boats that are catching multiple sailfish are slow trolling either live thread fins or sardines, or they're power drifting those baits with a kite. Uh, but you know, you can also get bit just trolling the normal spread of naked ballyhoo. Uh, keep in mind that they're pods of sailfish, not singles. So you wanna try and leave a bait in the water while you're hooked up to get those doubles and triples and quads going. Average sail in my, sailfish in my region is gonna be 40 pounds. I got a photo there, that's Chessy Rico. Uh, she's the first mate for Ch Captain Charlie Stuve out of Jupiter. Uh, she's releasing a sailfish there, and that, that little tape that they got on the fish, that measures it and gives them both size and weight estimates. It's kind of a pretty cool deal. All right, let's go inshore there, Hollywood. Well, we're, we're starting to see that first push of red minnows and also the juvenile pilchers and sardines that show up around the inlets. And that's got the mangrove snapper fired up around the inlet jetties and the nearby seawalls, bridges, and docks. I've had reports of mangrove snapper to eight pounds caught this week, along with some legal-sized mutton snapper. And then there's also been a push of, of snapper on the Lake Worth and Juno Beach piers. You want to target those snapper by fishing close to the rocks uh, on the slack tide. That's when the fish come out of the rocks to feed. If you can get four or five-inch live sardine, it's pretty much money on those snapper. But uh, juvenile pilchards, threadfin, sand perch, those are also good baits. And live shrimp's another easy option. 
Uh, you can add an eighth ounce jig head to the base to get them down or a split shot. Uh, and the average mangrove snapper is going to be one to three pounds. The other bite we got going on the back of the full moon, the local permit population has been really active with fish feeding around the mouth of the Fort Pierce Inlet and around the mouth of the St. Lucie Inlet. Both of those are happening on the outgoing tide. That's when the crabs are flowing out the inlets on the tide. There's also been some fish at the power plant outflow in St. Lucie County and also along the beaches just north of Jupiter Inlet and even off some of the piers off Palm Beach County. Most of those fish in Palm Beach County are coming at night. By far the best bait for permit is a live crab either a small blue crab or a pass crab, and you can fish those on 30 or 40 pound fluorocarbon leader and a, a 3 circle hook, or you can weight them with a, a chartreuse uh, 3 8 ounce saltwater assassin jig head. I really like that jig head because it's got a super strong hook that those fish can't straighten out. And if you can't find crabs, a jumbo shrimp will also work. You can either free line that or put it on a jig head. Most of the permit are big, averaging 20 pounds or more. I got a photo just to give you an idea. That's Helena Wilkes, with a permit she caught on a live crab and a 3 8 ounce saltwater assassin jig head. And that thing was just a stud. That is a stud. All right, speaking of stud, you got any bass reports of any big fish being caught, Buff? Well, you know, despite the blazing heat, the early morning bass bite on Lake Okeechobee remains outstanding. But the key is you got to be on that water a half hour before dawn if you really want to get the big numbers of fish. I was talking to Captain Mike Shellen out of OkeechobeeBassFishing.com. He said you can hear the bass popping in the dark along the outside edges of the Kissimmee grass around the south end of King's Bar and also off of Harney Pond. And you can catch those fish on just about every cast until the bite dies off. You want to throw either a white spinner bait with a gold willow leaf blade or a bass assassin elite shiner in any of the shad colors. A lot of the fish are in that one to two pound range, but there are some big fish uh, in that mix as well, up to six pounds. Particularly fish shiners, you might get them up to eight pounds. Then once that sun starts to beat down in the water, the bite shuts off and you have to, you know, slow down and go fishing like uh, with weightless worms, rig Senko style, or a big 12 inch worm fish slow, or fish live shiners along the edges of the grass. So be out on the water early. Some of those mornings you'll catch 15 to 20 fish before the heat shuts them down. Other mornings you'll catch 50 or more. Each day is sort of different. So the summer heat's not slowing down the bass bite, not until at least mid-morning. All right, thanks so much, Hollywood. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the East region. Mike suggests this weekend you go inshore for snook, tarpon, and flounder. At the South Jetty and Fort Pierce, use live bait, swimming plugs, and saltwater assassins in four-inch shads. And then offshore, King Mackerel, just north of the sand pile, east of St. Lucie Inlet. Use live sardines on triple hook mono rigs. Well, the Bell Southwest region is no stranger to the ladies of the water either, and Captain Ronnie Houston's on the line with the scoop. Hey, Ronnie. Well, hey, Bray, you know, uh, all the women in the house tonight really do deserve a round of applause because they really have embraced our sport. From my experiences, I've really been impressed with the uh, acuity, the willingness uh, to listen and learn. And when the opportunity has uh, arised to catch a certain species, then, you know, they generally get it done. But some suggestions for the ladies just starting would be that, you know, join a group or a club, you know, magazines, TV shows like the Florida Insider Fishing Show, videos, and if possible, getting out with the fishing guide. I would also suggest maybe going to your local bass pro shop just to buy an inexpensive outfit, get out to plenty of local lakes and canals and start practicing your casting. Once you start that, then maybe set up some targets and you can start casting in an object to start getting a little bit better. But also, you know, for, for those women who want to do it on their own, you also go online to look up knots so you can start practicing your, your, your rigging. When you have those down, you know, Pat, then it's time to move on and start fishing for the species you desire. Remember, ladies, you know, it's one step at a time. Before you know it, you'll be reeling in the, the fish of your dreams. And I got a couple pictures of uh, 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 a lady with a nice permit and triple tail caught with Captain Brian Sanders, who's also involved a lot with the ladies. Let's go fishing. So if some of you ladies are interested, he's uh, catching some nice species. Uh, also on the inshore side, we're going to talk about the tarpon. Plenty of rain. Plenty of rain from Emily and still coming down. Juvenile tarpon and tarpon up to 80 pounds from Buttonwood Bay all the way up to the Barren River. Now you want to concentrate in the middle bays where the feeder creek dump out from US 41 and work the way up the creeks towards US 41. But then also the outer, off island, outer Gulf Islands on the lower stages of the tide along the outside edges and troughs are holding fish in pods up to about 80 pounds. Now a variety of artificial three to four inch chugging lures, poppers, walk the dog lures, 
But another soft plastic that's been doing really well in the, in the tannic waters, the Bass Assassin Salty Snack and Pumpkin and Chartreuse, a variety of three to four, four uh, inch lip plugs. But you know what? Once you find these fish up the creeks, you got to be stealthy, you got to be patient. If you move too quick and make too much noise, guys, those fish are going to be gone. All right, Ronnie, before we go any further, I want to take a look at the Navionics. And what I'm going to do is, in your region, as you know, Chuck Golusky can quite be challenging at times. So we're going to create a route. We're going to run from the boat ramp in Chuck Golusky. So we're going to push this and hold. And then we're going to run on down to Chatham River. And the great part about this is what Navionics does is it'll create the route for me. Now, guys, as you look at this Navionics, what it does is the red actually is the places that you need to be very careful because of the shallow water. So it'll let you know that. Now all I gotta do is push go, and it's gonna adjust anything that I need to do. So that's the Navionics from this week. All right, Ronnie, what do you got for us offshore? You know, offshore, we, uh, we've got the mangrove snappers. With this bright moon we're having right now, coming up on the fold, a nighttime bite along most noted wrecks and artificial reefs from Marco to Fort Myers Beach. You know, just getting out on them and just simply sandballing with your favorite uh, mixture of sandballing or simply stopping at a tackle shop to get some block chum or simply cut pilchers. Just enough to get these mangroves going. Once you get them going, you can, you know, flat line or just add a little weight depending upon where they are in the water column. Moon's been bright. Be easy on the chum. Don't overfeed them and let them know what's going on because I promise you that bite's going to cut down. Baits of choice are going to probably be cut squid, pilchers, herring, and shrimp. All baits have been working, moon's been bright, winds have been down, mangrove snapper bites happening right now. Now, still on the offshore side, permit bite still remains to be good to the north from Stump Pass to Fort Myers Beach. You want to concentrate in the 6 to 25 mile range, outfishing most noted structure. Now, with the, with the wind picking up later in the afternoon and the sun, early morning has been the best bite. Anchor up or drift across, best baits of choice have been live crabs. Reports I've been getting is drifting across has been better because the fish have been 50 to 100 yards off the structure instead of being on the structure. Keep an eye on the weather, and uh, it's a little early this year, but the Take a Soldier Fishing event will be coming up September 16th. It's probably the biggest event in my region. We'll be taking 100 active duty soldiers out with about 75 guides donating their time. There'll also be a tournament, a couple dinners. We'll be fishing for some offshore groupers, some redfish, and some trout. We're trying to get Rick and Bree there and a few guys from the show at the last minute, so please come out and support your troops on September 16th out of Hamilton Harbor. Thank you so much, Ronnie. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Southwest region hotspots. Inshore redfish, Chatham River to Jack Daniels Key. On the higher stages, strictly fishing oyster bars and knocker rigs for, with cut bait. And then offshore red groupers, Wiggins Pass to Redfish Pass and 55 to 75 feet of water fishing hard bottom using cut baits, Bree. Well, ladies and gents, the Central East region is up next. But first, we're going to see what Dave Farrell at the workbench has for all of us Dave. for rigs and techniques. Well, Dave? We're going to talk about tying a uni knot, a, a good knot that everybody can tie. And once you learn it, you don't have to worry about anybody else telling you to tie anything. There you go. So, so we're teaching, teaching the guys how to tie it. No, never mind. Never mind. Let's just go. What? All right, we'll be back with some uni knots. <laughs> what? <laughs> I have no idea. Right? What? The what? Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevy. Find new roads. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Contender Boats, performance through innovation. Daiquiri Deck, Sarasota's favorite place to meet. Qmax, maximum salt water protection. And Sea Sucker, get pumped. You each drive a Ford pickup, right? Yes, yes sir. I have a Ford F-150. I've always been a Ford guy. And I have a real treat for you today. Awesome. I'm going to show you a next generation pickup. Let's do this. This new truck now has a corner step built right into the bumper. Super cool. The bed is made of high strength steel, which is less susceptible to punctures than aluminum. Aluminum is great for a lot of things, but maybe not the bed of a truck. And best of all, this new truck is actually <laughs> oh, 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 my. the current Chevy Silverado. I'm speechless. <laughs> this puts my Ford truck to shame. I tell you, I might be a Chevy guy now. <laughs> yeah. Meet the water's lightest 25 horsepower four stroke, the all new Yamaha F25, the new standard in 25 horsepower portable four strokes. At just 126 pounds, it's got the best power to weight ratio of any 25 horsepower four stroke on the water. With performance that bests the previous Yamaha F25 and features like Yamaha's VTS for precise trolling speeds, batteryless EFI, built in resting pads, and carry handles, it's the perfect portable power for small boats.
It's one of the most ancient forms of hide-and-seek known to man. And nobody knows how to play the fishing game better than the backcountry guides and offshore captains of the Florida Keys and Key West. Ready or not, here we come. everyone, let's now take a look at the FWC news and notes. August 14th, there's a PS boating course in St. Petersburg. September 9th, there is another PS boating course in Peace River. For more information, visit myfwc.com. Now let's head to the CCA workbench for some rigs and techniques. So we're here at the CCA workbench and yes, rumor has it during the commercial break that you were going to get naughty. Yeah, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tie some knots. But first, I'm going to talk a little <laughs> bit about lady angling. Because, you know, when I was at Marlin University, I got the pleasure of having quite a few ladies come and, and fish with us. And, you know, one of the first things you have to tell them is that there is no advantage to being a boy in this sport. If you, if you're, you know, pay attention to what we tell you and do the proper techniques, you can whip any boy's butt any time. And, and it, and it happens a lot, you know, because when I have those fellows come on the boat with the lady and I'm back there telling them what to do, the lady is usually the only one who's paying any attention to me because all the boys think they know how to do it already. Right. And then obviously when they mess up, I get to ride them like a pony for a little while. But yeah, but no, <laughs> but we have the girls, you know, when the girls are coming, we, we had a, a few of the ladies come in earlier today and we asked them, you know, what would you like to see, you know, to talk about to the rigging techniques and they said well i, I don't i don't like to uh rely on my husband or my boyfriend or whatever to tie my hooks on or to, or to tie my leaders on and i said well we'll do a uni knot because it's a really easy knot to do and it's and it's a hundred percent knot and if you can tie a uni knot well you can do a lot of different things with it and yeah. it, it can get you through a whole lot of different situations yeah. first off we're going to hold that carbiner there we're going to show you how to tie a hook on this is the hook this is the hook you just run the, the line through the eye, right. lay it back down alongside of itself. We're going to play to that camera there, right. Dave, number one. And you make a loop. Yes, sir. And then you go through the loop and the main line. Around the main line, do through it. the loop with yep. the tag in. Make, you make sure you do it at least three or four times. Right. I try to do it four times at least. Right. And then you tighten that sucker down. Now, this is a, a yarn, so I can't really get it really slick, but what you're going to do in real life is you're going to get some spit and put on there and slide that thing down and it's going to Thanks, go all Dave. the way down to the <laughs> probably it's not going to go slimy there. dog yeah but there it's going to, it makes a nice cone too right and if your knot doesn't look right then it's not right that's you know, right when you when you make a knot when you make any knot if it if the if the knot doesn't look like the knot's supposed to look you know evenly and coned up then you need to cut it off and, and tie it on again it. don't be afraid pull guys pull on it yeah, if it doesn't hey if it doesn't <laughs> stay then it's not a good knot. You got to start over. Yep, yep. And with the same knot, <laughs> if you were going to be tying a, a a leader to to a main line, right? You do the same thing with this uni knot. What you do is you lay the two pieces that you want to put it put together side mm -hmm. by side. Right. You make a loop in this one, and you same do it three thing. or four times around, just like we did with the hook. Right. And you tighten that down just a little bit. Right. Do the same thing on the other side with the other tag line, the other little Show piece. that camera, Dave. All right, go ahead. Lay it alongside. Make your loop. Go One, through, tag in. Two. Doing good. Three. I'm over here. I feel like this Dave is, has this his is, own cheering This section. is also called a jam knot because when you get ready to put it together, wet, get it, it. wet it and then jam it down together. And see, that's the cool part, guys, is they jam together. You trim this off as tight as you can. And, and it goes through the guides. Right. It's a little bit bigger than an F and G knot, but you can tie this knot in the dark. Right. You know, once you get that uni knot, you know, that, that deal where you put that loop around and then you loop, 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 and then pull it tight, 
that knot is 100% knot, and it's good for your for all for all your stuff. Awesome. Has some nice work over here at the workbench. No worries. That's you know. Easy stuff, we try to do it easy. Remember this guys, the reason why it's really important, whether it's a uni knot, a clinch knot, a bimini twist, any knot, especially with monofilament, you gotta wet it. Because mm -hmm. as you start to really cinch it down and tighten it down, it heats it up. You can and burn it. it. Yeah, <clears> and in mono, it. what that can do is, if say you're fishing 12 pound test, now it could make it to six. Eight or six. Eight. Yeah, and, and, and when you pull big when, problem. when you pull that knot down tight, you 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 take a good look at all the line that went into into the knot before it pulled out. Right. And you don't want it to be stretched real tight. You don't want it to be curled up, and you don't want it to be burnt. You know, which is is really thin. Mono will thin out if you burn it if you're having, pulling it too hard. Right. So, good job over here. I know where I, you taught me something. I doubt it. Rick. <laughs> Rick, you should have said not bad. That's what you should have said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Dave, I remember you teaching me the FG knot, and that was a huge, huge thing for me because, like he said, when I first started fishing, you know, I didn't know many knots. He taught me that knot, it got me through many situations, and it's so nice to be self sufficient, ladies. All right, the ladies of the Bells Central East region are quite the catch, and so are the fish they catch. And Captain Jim Ross is here to tell us all about it. Hey, Jim. Hey there, Bree. I couldn't have said it better myself, you know. I don't know about you guys, and, and well, of course, you, Bree, wouldn't be included in this, but the rest of the guys out there, you know, getting ladies on the boat is a, is a whole lot of fun. The gals really know how to have a big time, even if the fish aren't biting. But a lot of times, you know, women don't get a, they need a refresher course because they don't get to go fishing quite as much as we do. So a lot of times when I get women on the boat, I have to teach them how to fight the fish or even cast as a, you know, that, 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 that type of thing. But, you know, the, the biggest thing that I get from having ladies on the boat is that they know how to have a good time. And it doesn't matter if the fish are biting or not. And that reminds me to enjoy every minute of my excursion when I'm out on the water, not just the catching part. So that's one thing I really want to say to those guys out there, that when you're taking ladies, just remember, it's not always all about the catching. And speaking of catching, I've got a photo here of a redfish with Robin Carpenter and some of this, you know, this other guy that a lot of you guys and gals out there may know. Um, so let me let me kind of preface this photo. My girlfriend Robin and I went to the CCA Star Tournament Awards banquet last year, and we ran into this famous fishing guy. So after the meeting, well, after meeting him, and of course this sexy 27-inch winning tournament winning redfish that he's got there that he seems to bring with him everywhere he goes robin dropped me like a hot potato so you can imagine i got jealous and i really have to admit i had some serious redfish envy going on that night but you know what i got another photo here this is robin with a black drum and as you can see it took, it took a couple of months you know to try and get her mind off that other famous guy and his you know his redfish that he totes around with him but she gave me a second chance. I got her out on the boat, and we ended up pulling in her biggest black drum ever. Well, Jim, all I got to say is you're lucky that I didn't ever get the chance to take her fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen what you carry around with you, brother. I wouldn't stand a chance with you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Well, you know, speaking of the redfish, Rick, Mesquite Lagoon is still the place to be. The oversized fish are there, the slot fish are there. If you're fishing, the water's starting to turn colors. It's starting to lose its, its clearness. It's starting to get some of that algae growth in it. But you know what? There's still plenty of redfish there. Trek out the, the uh, sandy potholes, cast your live baits into them. Pigfish, tinfish, muller are working really well. Also, saltwater assassin four inch sea shad and the five inch die dapper. You want to put those on a weedless hook. And good colors right now are Houdini and Bone Diamond in the sea shad, and that gold rust color and that trickster color in the, in the die dapper. So during the mornings, you want to get in there, hit it, hit it uh, shallow, slide back off to the drop-offs as the day dra dra uh, draws on. But I'll tell you, you know, those big fish can be there at any given time. So don't be, uh, you know, don't be mistaken that that next cast is going to be another slot-sized fish because we've got 40-inch fish cruising those edges right now. You guys and gals need to get out there and catch some. We're going to swing offshore now, Rick. King mackerel. You know, we've had some cool water spells. There, this whole region has had a really funky summer to, and I don't know what to, to, to even think about it, but the king mackerel have been moving all over the place because of it. 
usually they're on the 80 to 90 foot reefs, but you know, sometimes they're on the beach and sometimes they're running back out again. Lately, guys like Stan Mickle on the charter boat sea level or out of Sunrise Marina in Port Canaveral, he's been reporting good numbers on his half day trips, but sometimes he's only going 8 or 12 miles. He's not on the beach and he's not on the reef. He's kind of somewhere in between. But he wants to slow troll with live baits. Most of the rest of you guys are going to do that as well. That seems to be the best way to catch a fish right now. And sardines, greenies, and pilchards will also work if you guys and gals use a sabiki rig rather than a cast net. Our average uh, kingfish is running 12 to 18 pounds right now. Now, species two, mangrove snapper. The guys that are fishing in the afternoons and going out overnight on the reefs and wrecks in the 65 to 120 feet are doing best. You want to drift small chunks of sardines or pogies back in the slick. Once you get them up in the water column, about every tenth piece of bait that you put back, make sure you got a two-watt size VMC pinhead hook in it. That way you're going to be able to put some pressure on those bigger fish, pull them out of that structure, not let them get to that structure. And our average mangrove right now is running three to six pounds, but we have got some really large ones. You can get some 10 and 12 pounders possible this week. All right, thank you so much, Jim. Great report from the Bells uh, Central East region. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Sea Sucker Hotspots. Inshore, jacks, redfish, and snook fish the Sebastian Inlet and the jetties or the fenders at night with storm swim baits and flare hog jigs. And then offshore, Kobe is amberjacks and king mackerel fish the reefs in 70 to 90 feet of water off of Sebastian, chum, and use live baits to catch these kings. All right, Rick, every week, CCA, right? Yeah. Okay, well, everyone loves a giveaway. If you aren't registered for STAR, now is your chance. This week, CCA Florida STAR will be giving away a $250 Strike Zone fishing gift card for either Jacksonville or Melbourne, which can be used online or in person. So just get registered before midnight this Friday, and you'll be in the drawing. The winner will be announced on Monday. So with just three weeks of fishing left, there's plenty of time to get registered, get out there, catch those fish, and win big. Right, Rick? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we're just getting started here on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. And up next, we're bringing you to the Southeast and Panhandle region. And we're also chatting with our guests from Costa and Chef Taylor, too. We'll be right back. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin, the best lures, period. Blue Water Outriggers, everything for your outdoor adventures. The American Fishing Tackle Company, precision tackle and performance clothing since 1958. Best parts, best prices, Bennett Auto Supply. Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. And Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. I'm Captain Rick Murphy, and I'm a life member of CCA. Why am I so involved with CCA, you ask? Because I want our fisheries to be in better shape for my kids and their kids. CCA is working to ensure the future of recreational fisheries and the rights of recreational anglers. The future of fishing starts today with you. How do you want to leave things with your kids? If you're like me, you'll want to make the right choice and go to joincacaflorida.com right now. As close as you're gonna get to a sure thing for catching billfish is Guatemala. They're here, man. This has been a 20 year run, buddy. These things haven't left, there's no cycle. When it comes to sail fishing, this is the real deal. The amount of sailfish here is ridiculous. You each drive a Ford pickup, right? Yes, yes sir. I have a Ford F-150. I've always been a Ford guy. And I have a real treat for you today. Awesome. I'm gonna show you a next generation pickup. Let's do this. This new truck now has a corner step built right into the bumper. Super cool. The bed is made of high strength steel, which is less susceptible to punctures than aluminum. Aluminum is great for a lot of things, but maybe not the bed of a truck. And best of all, this new truck is actually <laughs> oh, oh my. the current Chevy Silverado. I'm speechless. <laughs> this puts my poor truck to shame. I tell you, I might be a Chevy guy now. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome back to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. And as you can see, I have two lovely anglers with me, Amanda Sabin and Heather Harkavy. You guys are the Coast Fishing team. And you know, Amanda, a few years ago, I can't remember, three or so, I noticed that Costa dedicated eight new styles. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've been off and running. Why don't you tell us what's going on over at Costa? Sure, yeah. You know, we realized that we really didn't have a selection that fit the needs of a lot of female anglers out there because there are a ton of them. And we wanted to have styles that offered the technology of our Costa sunglasses, but also looked good too, because uh, we like to look nice on the water. So we, we started to make the styles, and then we started to want to bring more women into the sport. 
you know, why not encourage dads to take their girls fishing and and so wives we, fishing? And we've this past year, one of the big developments was we started a new ladies coast of fishing team. Why don't you tell me something about that? We did. So we decided to team up and fish the Los Sueños Triple Crown this year. Heather was on the team. Um, we had seven <laughs> ladies, and uh, we just wanted to prove that we could hang on the big stage with the big boys, and um, I think we did. So we go down to Los Angeles. How many girls are on the team? Seven. Seven girls. And so what is exactly happens as, as far as all, we have your own captain, you have your own mates? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. Um, our mate was a female, so she'd go in there and wire blue marlin and sailfish. And she's also maybe even shorter than you, Rick. So <laughs> <laughs> that, that is not right. That, you know, Amanda is the only, the beautiful part <laughs> about you and I, when we fish together on the C1 team is that you always told me when I missed some spot on the back of my head when I was shaving. So I appreciate that. But you know, Los Sueños, obviously it's some high adventure stuff going on there. And it's amazing. I saw this one picture where I think it was you, Heather, that was getting totally annihilated by a wave while you were backing down on a fish. There you are right there. Is that you? <laughs> there I am. Yes, we backed down on those fish fast, and that was quite the mouthful of water that came out of that fish. But he was successfully landed in points on the board. <laughs> well, that's all that matters, right? Exactly. That's right. So what kind of advice would Costa, you, Amanda, you, Heather, give ladies that are interested in getting involved in fishing? Where, where should they go, and is there anything Costa can do to help them along their way? Absolutely. You can always check out some of the stuff that Costa has going on. We're always trying to bring more women into the sport. Um, there's amazing clubs locally and around in your states uh, that try and give seminars to teach women uh, how to get out there. It could be a little, a little intimidating, so there's a lot of other women that you can go and learn from and well, speak, experience the sport. Well, we have a woman here that I know is really yes. good, and so you have something that so you want to So I have present. a little something from our, our friend Bree because we wanted to officially welcome you to the Reina de Costa, so these are for you. Oh. Our special uniform pants. What? Really? <laughs> really? Yeah. Where's mine? Awesome. Where's mine, Amanda? I would look really good in these. We'll work on yours. Thank you guys so much. Well, I'm so excited. I'm going to go put those pants on right after this. The Casa Vieja Southeast region is now on deck and ready to tell us what the lady anglers are up to in his region. Hey, Jimbo. Hey, Bree and Rick and everybody else. Well, yeah, we've had plenty of lady anglers aboard the Thomas Flyer over the years. And generally, we don't do anything different with the ladies on board. And they are almost always better angler than the anglers than the men because they definitely are more patient and willing to listen to our coaching. And I've also noticed that Rick, my brother, he's much quicker to help the ladies out with those fighting belts putting them on. But, uh, <laughs> you know, there's, there's quite a few ways for the ladies to get involved in fishing in the southeast region. We got Betty Bowman's Ladies Let's Go Fishing program. That's done a lot to promote the sport uh, fishing amongst the female anglers. And then there's also numerous fishing clubs. And pretty much every fishing tournament also has a ladies' division. Now, talking about inshore fishing, the catch and release snook fishing in, in the inlets is still our best bet. The snook, they're schooled up in all of the inlets in the region, and they're being caught on live pilchards, herrings, pinfish, croakers, and mullet. You want to fish those baits near the bottom on a Jupiter rig. Now, a lot of these fish have been in the 20-pound range, so you want to use at least 50-pound fluorocarbon leader, 5-0 to 6-0 circle hooks. And then if there's no live bait available, try working flare hawk jigs or four inch DOA or bass assassin jerk baits along the bottom. Now both the incoming and now coin tides have been good early in the morning or late into the afternoons into the evenings. And if the water's clear, then you want to fish the outgoing tide. Now moving offshore, dolphin are still being found anywhere from eight to 15 miles offshore. One day it's been kind of mediocre, the next day it's been pretty good. So it's pretty much like it's been for the last month. Bulk of the fish are being caught around patches of sargasm that are drifting through, and birds have also been working over most of the fish. The fish are being caught around the weed patches on troll ballyhoo, feathers, and lures, or you can simply just stop, put out some live and cut baits, and drift around those grass patches. And if you don't have any live bait, there's also been plenty of live baits hanging around under those grass patches, and you can catch them really easily by dropping a sabiki rig underneath. Now, if there's any dolphin in the area, dropping that sabiki rig while you're you know, trying to make some bait, all that commotion should bring those dolphin up. Now, most of the fish have been good-sized schoolies in the five to eight pound range, and there have been some uh, occasional larger fish mixed in. Now, I got a photo, and this is an awesome underwater photo shot by our good friend, George Bustamante. 
board the Thomas Flyer, and I believe you and Bree, Rick and Bree, you were on board that day. That's the fish that Bree caught. That is yep. a cool, cool picture. I love that nice. picture, man. Right. Says it all. All right, tell me about I the just kingfish. Wanted to share that with everybody. All right, then. There's also been some kingfish showing up after being almost non-existent most of the summer. Now the bulk of these kings are being caught on the troll using three and a half drone spoons or a pink sea witch with a strip bait. You want to fish it on a wire line outfit or behind a planer. Use a long leader and you want to fish in 90 to 130 feet of water. There's also some kings being caught on the live bait. Pilchers and herrings have been working but trolling has been producing more fish, but the size has definitely been better on the live baits. The kings have been in the five to 12 pound range, and the best bite has been in front of any of the inlets throughout the region. All right, thank you so much, Jimbo. Great report from the Casa Vieja Southeast region. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots. Inshore snook, drift live baits through your local inlet for nighttime snook, and then offshore dolphin. Look for those dolphin under the birds and floating debris and weed lines anywhere from five to 20, mi 20 miles offshore. That's a big gap. That is a big gap. Hey, Rick, I got the coast of pants. I know. I'm so excited. I can't All right, believe back they to me. Didn't get me <laughs> oh, you would look great in them too. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Pat Deneen in the Yeti Pan in the region has had his daughter Katie out on the water since tyke years, and she's turned into quite the angler when she goes fishing with pops, right? Yeah, she, yeah, she, she sure has. And I tell you, it's, it's always nice to have lady anglers on the boat. They, they, they generally catch the biggest fish, which is awesome. Um, and uh, we got a lot, of, a lot of ladies up here that are passionate about fishing, and we also have tournaments that cater to them. Uh, pretty much every major tournament in, in the Panhandle has a, a lady angler divisions in them. And as well, there's at least three blue water tournaments that are ladies only. Um, of the most recent one being the Mobile Big Game Club, uh, they hosted their ladies tournament this past weekend uh, for Blue Marlins, you know, offshore blue water pel pelagic fish. Um, and there's a lot, like I said, dedicated recreational lady anglers. Two that come to mind right off the top of my head is Tracy Block here in Fort Walton. She's passionate about tarpon fishing, and then uh, uh, Linda Emmett over in Panama City. She's really passionate about flats fishing and light tackle stand-up paddleboard fishing. So it's always good having them on the boat. They, like I said, they typically catch the biggest fish. Um, they usually outfish the men every time. And I uh, just recently had a really nice young lady, Savannah, from Oklahoma. There's a photo of her, a uh, 16-year-old lady, and she cut, caught amberjacks, sharks, mackerel. She had a great time fishing, and, and it, it showed with her smile. What else you got going on? Pat? Rick, King Mackerel Fish has been good throughout the Panhandle, and in particular off Panama City. I spoke with Captain Terry McGowan, and he tells me they're consistently catching kings at the entrance buoys and also at, on some of those near shore uh, bait schools in 68 foot of water fishing around the fads. Uh, definitely live baits are going to outperform dead baits or lures. Uh, herrings are the number one bait, cigar minnows being the second choice. You can sabiki the bait up inside the passes or just outside the passes, particularly with that incoming morning tide. And immediately slow troll those baits in the area on a wire stinger hook, a wire leader with a stinger hook. Uh, if you have a downrigger or a trolling lead, it, it always pays to put a couple baits down deep in the water column as well. The kings are running six to 20 pounds. Uh, moving inshore, the mangrove snapper fishing, just like last week, has been real consistent. Many of the inshore guides are, are, are counting on those mangrove snappers for a bent rod as well as for sending their clients home with some fillets. Most of the structure in 10 feet or more water uh, and also relatively near the inlets, we'll be holding mangrove snappers right now. Like the king mackerel, it's a live bait fishery with the best baits being small pilchards, spot minnows, and shrimp uh, fished on a light leader and a small circle hook. The pilchards and the spot minnows, you can catch them with a quarter-inch mesh, mesh net. There's plenty of them inside Destin Harbor right now and also you know, near the jetties and near the Destin Bridge. Uh, the shrimp, you're going to want to get them at, a, at, at your local uh, bait shop. A uh, big bay mangrove snapper will run about two pounds, but most are in that 10 to 11 inch range. And then finally, the speckled trout fishing has been pretty consistent. We've had a lot of rain. Uh, it's, it's put a lot of fresh water into our bays. It's pushed the trout down from the upper bays into the lower bay, bay areas. Captain West Rozier, uh, he says that there's a really, over Pensacola, he says there's a really solid trout bite in Perito Bay over the grass and in Pensacola Bay in Santa Rosa Sound. Uh, Captain West has been having his best action early in the morning at first light, casting chug bugs and soft plastic twitch baits. But the trout also respond really well to live baiting, so you can chum them with the filters and menhaden. Just anchor up on the edge of the grass flat, you know, liberally put out some, some nestfuls of, of live bait for chum, and then put a hook in one and free line it, or even fish one under a float. Uh, many of the trout are in that 15 to 20 inch range. 
And if you're live chumming with, with pilchards in, in, in Menhaden, you can count on the bluefish, the ladyfish, and the Spanish mackerel to show up as well. Super report from the Yeti Panhandle region, Pat. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots. Inshore speckled trout on the grass at Big Sabine. Use live baits all, uh, and be on the water at first light. And then offshore, Vermilion Snapper. Big bee liners on natural bottom in 100 to 150 feet of water using cut bait on two hook chicken rigs. All right, we're going to take a little break, but when we return, we're going to head down to the Keys and then we're going to head over to the CCA workbench for something every girl loves to do, whether it's shopping for shoes, fishing tackle, or my favorite, bathing suits. Dave, what you got for us in new products today? Well, we got a bunch of stuff. We got some girl stuff and yeah. we also have some uh, cool sea sucker stuff. That's put, pretty put cool. Your, put your kayak on top of your truck. There you, you go. Dave's going to model a bathing suit? I maybe? hope yeah. so. Yeah, I, hope I, so. I didn't tell you about that. Oh, yeah. well, we'll have to wait and see. So we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> sweet. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Navionics, we start where the road ends. Soft Science, Supreme Comfort Footwear. Power Pole, Swift, Silent, Secure. Real Legends, exclusively at Bells. And Maverick Boat Group, makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, and Pathfinder. Yamaha's 4.2 liter V6 offshore four strokes. For those that like their V6 lighter, faster, and stronger. Setting new standards for power, efficiency, speed, and lightweight. Built for the rigors of offshore boating. Packed with Yamaha's legendary reliability. And now Yamaha's 4.2 liter V6 four strokes offer a choice between digital or mechanical controls to match your rigging preference. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Hey, how do you like your contender? How do I like my contender? What's not to like? Dude, I just saw a contender, and man, I gotta give me one. The sea suck, uh, blah, blah. Where are the we? CCA workbench. <laughs> I mean, yes, we are. The I know you want to talk about the about... Well, we're going to talk about the watch first. Okay. We're go. It's it, your shop. That's correct. This is the the hook and watch hook and gaff watch company, and this is their Sport Fisher three model. And this is the watch geared more to the lady anglers. But you know that there's nothing lady about that watch. Actually, a guy so could cool. a guy could wear that watch just as easily. It's you know it's one of their smaller ones. That's why they call it their their girl watch, which I like smaller watches anyway right. and it's got the you know it's got a lockable uh, crown on it it's yeah. waterproof to 200 meters which is like a you know way deeper than you'd ever want to go you'd be right. dead long before you have to worry about that 200 meters <laughs> it's got a it's got a, a vinyl uh, uh, wristband there and it, it it's impregnated with vanilla if you smell that thing it smells like vanilla I and smell it over here because usually when you have a you know when you're getting in and out of the water with a watch band on it they'll start to stink and yeah. That keeps it from sticking, which yeah. is cool. Uh, it's lightweight titanium, uh, sapphire crystal, so you know, scratch proof. It's not going to scratch. Um, you know, just, and it's got the super, it's got the luminous paint 
on it to, so you can see it in the dark. See it in the dark. Yep. Very they, cool watches by Hook and Gaff. And they Gaff. make some cool men's watches yep, too. Yep, there's a man's watch too right there. That's the black, Sport Fisher Black. There but, you uh, go. But Hook and Gaff. Hook and Gaff. All Real right. good stuff. All right, now we're going to go uh, to the real legends. You know, here in Florida, we have Bells, and, and, and this is some of the nice ladies' clothing they have. That is the real tech uh, performance top. It's very comfortable, and what's really to make this special is on the back. If you spin that sucker around there real quick, it's got, a, it's got the open back, you know, so it, it, it's very, very, very detailed, very nicely detailed in the back. You know what I find humorous about this, Dave, is you What's and I that? are over here trying to talk oh, about ladies' clothes. It's, it's, it's just fabulous. Maybe we that should have That flows so this. nicely on you when you put it on, I'm telling you. It's, I'm sure. It's, 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 it's wonderful. And plus, plus we've got the, they've got the long, they got the long, slef, the long sleeve, keep it cool. I've, I've messed it all up here. I've got a big tangle. But these are, you know, very nice. These are all Florida, Florida made and Florida designed. Uh, SPF 50 for this one. Active cooling, moisture wicking. You know all the good stuff that you want in a in a nice performance and, shirt, and they also make some nice pants as well and shorts. These are the pants. Oh. You know, these are they call these a pant for a some pant. reason. Girls don't have an S on their pants. These are the Tech Point pant. They're skinny pant. <laughs> you know, four way stretch, very comfortable, and you know I'm a, I'm a big fan of those kind of those style of pants anyway. You know always, what I like been. about about them, Dave, is I like all the different colors because certainly when we're taking these cool photos, whether it's for magazine or social yep. media or whatever, yep. yep, I like the colors. These are really cool. These are these are some are, are a line of bags that are made actually made from sail cloth. That has been recycled sailcloth. That's and cool. They're called they're sea bags from Maine. They're handcrafted from recycled sails. Super tough and durable. This is the Costa version right here. Really cool that we have that along. Uh, we have this this big giant one here is wharf the wharf style. It's got you know a hemp hemp rope on the top. Yeah. Put a whole bunch of stuff in there, ladies. You could throw a baby in there if you wanted to probably. <laughs> I mean, you can put a lot of junk in there. I've seen my wife pull over you, just all kinds of stuff fall out of it. But you can put a lot of put, stuff in there. Put your dog in they there. Also, they also make this, this uh, a little tool bucket. It's, the wheels are coming tool off of bucket the workbench with, here. With, car, with this stuff on the outside. And they also make- Oh, that is cool. That is cool. And also this one's a beverage bucket, which is even better. You can put six a six pack of beer or, or, or colas or, or baby's milk for the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> that she threw the baby out. But right. anyway, but you can put ice in there and it'll keep all your stuff cold in there as well. Uh, boy, oh boy. Sea bags. See what the lady show does sea to bags. Dave too? Sea bags from Maine. <clears throat> I'm, normally this many ladies wouldn't be in the same room with me. They'd be, <laughs> they'd be all gone. But all these, right, these are the new sea suckers. These are for their roof racks and they're made for uh, you know, your paddle boards, your surfboards, a kayak, kayak. even. Yep. And you can see them there so over there. You can see the, the one on, on, the, on the, top the top of the, of the Chevy. Truck. It's got a con the canoe. What's cool about it is you got all you got to do, Dave, is this expands. 22 to 44 inches. Absolutely. So you take that cup off, take this cover off. That's right. And, and we've per you know showed the sea sucker. Push this down on the paint. Pump this <laughs> until the orange uh, button is completely gone. And guess what? We're and all you, good. And you can put you know you can stack these. They make two of them, so you can put this yeah. one on top of the board. And then you have you know two or That's, three boards. You can just yeah. keep stacking them, stacking so, them. So for guys that doing you know paddle boards, you know nobody ever paddle boards generally by themselves. Not usually. You can put me. a paddle board on the roof and right. then put this on the bottom of the paddle board and carry them in tandem. Right. How cool is that? That's cool, man. You, you can have two or three. Stack them. You, you can stack paddle boards. You can't beat it. All right. The last but not least, you know, for Bennett Auto, we do a little Bennett Auto thing every week. These are the, the Bosch Performance Stop ceramic brake pads. You know, I like Bosch stuff because I have an English car at home, so I use a lot of their Bosch stuff. There's 20% 20, 20 extended uh, pad life and reduced rotor wear. They're a lot quieter, lower dust. So get to Bennett Auto. That's the only place you can get those Bosch pads, by the way, is Bennett Auto Parts. That's one of the things you like about Bennett Auto. They That's have right. a lot of great stuff for both the Marine and our car at home. So, what do you think? Are you all right over there? What's she you giggling can about? Put your baby in it. Yeah, you Damn. could. It's big. I've never seen two men so out of their element. But there's no way you're ever getting me to do that workbench segment because that was perfection. <laughs> okay, the keys can be serious tournament territory or a fun family fishing destination. But whatever it is, Randy Tao is here to tell you about the fish you're going to be catching this weekend. Hey, good evening, fish fans. You know. We're talking about ladies, and, that, and it really ranges from young kids to grandmothers. They love being on the water, 
and especially the Keys. Women really like to come down to the Keys, get on the water, and just have fun. Some of them really like fishing. Some of them could care less. But nonetheless, if you do like to be competitive and you like to fish, there's a lot of things going on for women in the Keys, inshore tournaments, offshore tournaments, and they have the ladies' Let's Go Fishing gathering as well down here. So if you're a lady angler, you're going to show up in the Keys at some point. You're going to be down here fishing a tournament. Um, Sharon Mahoney, she runs a couple of tournaments here that are very well known. The Poor Girls Sailfish Tournament in February, and she also runs a backcountry tournament coming up in October. It's called the Casting for Cats. And these tournaments are for ladies only, and they're not a lot of money. And Poor Girls Sailfish Tournament is really uh, exactly that. You uh, you get your friends together, and it's it's about... Uh, taking your girlfriend or your wife or your friends out fishing for the day and and try to do it uh, inexpensive if you can and the entry fees are real low a lot of fun and there's uh, no shortage of things to do like that so for the ladies down here you know the guys kind of overdo it a little bit try to get too serious and try to make it uh, a little uncomfortable for them and we just need to back sometimes just slow down a little bit and say you know what Everybody's having fun. Let's leave it at that. But um, certainly a great place for the women to come and have fun and fish. The, um, the other thing that's going on right now, we talk about Grand Slams. You know, you hear a Grand Slam. That's a, a tarpon, a bonefish, and a permit on the flats. And in the backcountry, you have a tarpon, snook, and a redfish. If you want to add to that a trout in the backcountry, that's a super slam. If you want to add a mutton snapper on the flats, that's a super slam as well. And to do this in one day is a big accomplishment for a lot of people, and it doesn't come along very often because, believe it or not, we're only talking three or four species, but they're not in the same zip code usually, and they're hard to catch all in one day, especially um, with a fly rod or even on bait sometimes. I was talking to uh, Captain Steve Friedman, at fishingguide.com he's a local guy down here he had a spectacular day about a week ago with his angler chuck rocha and chuck had been trying to catch a permit for six years and he finally got it done not only did he catch his permit but he caught a bonefish he caught a permit and a tarpon and a snook and got his grand slam and i've got a couple of photos here kind of uh, showcasing that day, you can see the excitement on his face with that big permit and the rest of them to go with it. <laughs> well, congratulations, Steve, and good job, Chuck. All right, Randy, what else you got for us? Let's go offshore. You know, we still talk about dolphin, and uh, I was out today. Dolphin fishing was very good. Uh, 600 feet is where it happened, and a lot of the fishing right now, it's on birds and it's on weeds. If you find the weeds, you're going to find the fish. And it's been in the morning. It's been in the morning till about noon, and it's very active with plenty of birds and nice fish, um, fish up to 20, 25 pounds, and plenty of nice big schoolies. And um, if you want to go out late in the day, that's another time to go do it. And they're a little closer inshore. They're more about 300 feet in the late afternoon and evening. But uh, along some of these weed lines, you're going to find a piece of debris, a big patch of weeds. Take a bait rod, put a sabiki rig on it, Jig up some of the jacks that are under the weeds and use those for your live bait, and you won't believe what will happen. I was talking to Captain Brian Cohn. He's our dolphin expert down here. He catches dolphin every single day. He just knows what to do and where to go. And he sent me a picture of a couple of dolphin they've been catching, and he, he just says it's another day in the summer. Wow. Brian Cohn is the only one I know qualified to say that. All right, let's go <laughs> talk about some wahoo, Bubba. You know, this time of year when we're offshore doing that and the Gulf Stream is in that area, the water is really blue, cobalt looking blue, and um, there's wahoos in it. Now, if you're trolling for dolphin, if you're looking, trying to cover ground, it's always nice to put a bait out, something that's going to uh, go down a little deeper, uh, something with a dark feather or a dark lure on it works the best. And if you find a piece of floating debris, that's even better because a lot of these dolphins or uh, wahoos will be around the debris, but they're down maybe 20 feet, 30 feet. So if you see something floating and you get a line and drop it deep, you're going to 
probably come up with a nice big wahoo like uh, Shane Parker did over the weekend in Isla Mirada with his nice wahoo. Oh, you got a picture there? Oh, man. Wow. How big is that fish? Do you know, Randy? I think it was in the 40s, something like that. Super fish, man. All right, congratulations. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Florida Keys. Randy says that you should go inshore bonefish and look for them early in the morning for tailing fish on the low incoming tide and go back out late in the day between 6 p.m. and dark. And then offshore, dolphin, look for the weeds, debris, and birds in 650 to 1,000 feet of water in the morning. And then look shallower on your way back in 300 to 400 feet later in the day, Bree. You know, it never gets old seeing pictures of people with their fish. You just cheesing, and just so happy, You're just so proud of that Don't fish. Don't forget, guys, hold it out, make it look bigger, <laughs> but you gotta tuck your fingers. That's a Roland Martin trick. <laughs> I learned that from like the Bass King himself. Yes, you did. There's <laughs> always tournaments happening in the Keys, so let's see what's coming up. More than 40 species of fish are targeted during the Key West Fishing Tournament, continuing through November 30th. There's no entry fee and participants receive citations and qualify for a variety of prizes. The Robert James Slam Celebrity Tournament is set for September 8th through the 10th in Key West and the first of three tournaments in the annual Redbone Celebrity Tournament series. Anglers target tarpon, permit, and bonefish to achieve the coveted Flats Grand Slam. Redbone events raise funds for cystic fibrosis treatment and research. The Marathon International Bonefish Tournament is scheduled September 15th through the 17th and is the longest running tournament in the Keys. This tournament recognizes individual and team champions scoring releases of the largest bonefish and permit and top anglers in fly and Grand Slam divisions. For 18 years, the Take Stock in Children Backcountry Challenge in Key Largo has offered anglers the opportunity to win coveted trophies for trout, snook, and redfish. This year's tournament is set for September 22nd through the 24th. And if that isn't a not enough tournament for you, Andy Newman has more. So let's hear it, Andy. Well, hi guys. <laughs> Set for September 15th through the 17th, the Herman Lucerne Memorial Backcountry Fishing Championship is named after the man known as Mr. Everglades. Anglers are to target species only within the boundaries of Everglades National Park. Tournament headquarters are at the Islander Resort in Isla Morada. All proceeds benefit Everglades National Park resources. For more tournament details, examine HermanLucerneMemorial.com. And for additional information on all Florida Keys tournaments, go to FLAKeys.com. We're headed to North Florida next with the Northwest and Northeast captains. And then we're chatting with a young lady angler and chef extraordinaire who's been cooking on set for us in her fire disc. So stay hooked. You won't want to miss this. Wow, I can't wait to get over there. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Rapala. Catch the latest at Rapala.com. Startron cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. Yeti, built for the wild. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 30 years. Strike Zone Fishing, your fish hunt paddle store. And Guy Harvey, marine wildlife artist and conservationist. Drive a Ford pickup, right? Yes, yes sir. I have a Ford F-150. I've always been a Ford guy. And I have a real treat for you today. Awesome. I'm going to show you a next generation pickup. Let's do this. This new truck now has a corner step built right into the bumper. Super cool. The bed is made of high strength steel, which is less susceptible to punctures than aluminum. Aluminum is great for a lot of things, but maybe not the bed of a truck. And best of all, this new truck is actually <laughs> oh, 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 my. the current Chevy Silverado. I'm speechless. <laughs> this puts my poor truck to shame. I tell you, I might be a Chevy guy now. <laughs> yeah.
Flagler Construction Equipment is your certified Takeuchi equipment dealer, servicing 55 counties in Florida. With Takeuchi, you get brute strength combined with bulletproof durability. That means low downtime and optimal production. Flagler Construction Equipment is the partner for all your Takeuchi sales, service, and rental needs, and your first and last stop for legendary customer service and support. Pros know Takeuchi. Get to know Flagler Construction Equipment by stopping by one of our six locations or visit us on the web at www.flaglertakeuchi.com. Welcome back. I'm here with Taylor Sanders, chef extraordinaire. It smells amazing, Taylor. So tell us first about what you were cooking. So I'm cooking a cilantro lime rice, and then I have some chorizo that I've mm. already kind of crisped up, and I have some tomatoes and some shrimp in this one. How'd you like cooking in the fire disc? Pretty good, huh? It was pretty fun. I yes. saw the spatula was like as big as your body. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, you have traveled all over the place for all of your cooking, and you're kind of a, a, a star in your own right, but tell us a little bit about how you got started. So my family owns a restaurant in Fort Lauderdale called Kelly's Landing, and my dad cooks, and I've just kind of grown up in the kitchen and kind of grasped onto it. That's awesome. Well, she's only 14. She's absolutely amazing, super mature, but tell us about your love for fishing. I love for fishing. I prefer offshore fishing better than inshore fishing because I love to grouper fish mm. and I love to do all that And you like stuff. to cook grouper too, yes, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, one of our captains, Ronnie Houston, mentioned the tournament that you're very proud of, so I want to show yes. us a little bit about that too. So that's Naples Take a Soldier Fishing and it's an amazing, amazing organization and the dates are the 15th and the 16th and we take tons and tons of our military troops and it's a awesome. weekend to them. They get tons of free meals and then we have a big tournament and I usually bake cookies for that and it's super duper fun. Do you ever fish in it? No. No, but no. you cook, make cookies yes, for I it and cookies that's the important the part. Yes. All right. Well, you're also 14. You're going into high school. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your hobbies just as a kid because you are a kid, right? Yes. <laughs> well, I love to cheer. I love to fish and I'm very, very crafty. Oh, you're crafty. Yes, I love to do crafts. Anything to do with crafts, I love it. Okay, well, this smells amazing. I can't wait for everyone in the studio audience to try it, but we are going to have to go on to the Flagler Construction Equipment Northwest region with Captain Jeff Hageman. Hey, Jeff. How you doing? Pretty well, good. You can't, deny, you can't deny there's definitely been a trend right now within women embracing our fishing culture in a big way these days. I think it's great that the fair sex um, has such, such an interest in what's usually and mostly been a man's sport. Most of the, most of my my growing up, it's usually been a man's sport, and to see all these women come to it, I think it's really great, and a great opportunity to get out there and spend a day with your significant okay. other out on the water fishing. Can't beat that at all. Um, we've got women charter boat captains in our area now, uh, women fishing clubs, women only fishing tournaments. Uh, uh, there's a, even a women-only fly fishing club in our area. There's lots of uh, clubs in our area that offer seminars just for women. So if you're women looking into getting into fishing, you can check with your local bait and tackle shops. And a lot of them have uh, a women-only um, seminars going on. And another thing with all these women getting into fishing, I hope they're also getting into the conservation side of things and try to get involved in the CCA out there great way to promote our sport and to learn more about our sport. And I'm sure glad to have all these women out there doing this thing and uh, you, I'm sure everybody's heard this but uh, take a woman fishing. She's usually going to outfish the guys so everybody out there take a woman fishing and I'm going to get right into my offshore. Uh, Captain Jason Leinberger of Ruthless Fishing Charters out of Tampa Bay reports that snapper bite has been on fire recently and giants are eating. Uh, recent rains from tropical, uh, the tropics have been pushing the fish a little bit deeper of late to extend outside the freshwater lines. Small snapper under five pound range have been caught inside 30 feet and can be targeted in most artificial reefs in Tampa Bay and even around the local bridges in Tampa Bay. Uh, the bigger snapper are going to be much deeper, but they've been very responsible, responsive around that full moon and new moon tides. Anglers are catching snapper up to 11 pounds. Um, and some red snapper, vermilion snapper, and yellowtail on recent trips. Moving a little bit further up the coast, or actually around the bend of Tampa Bay, in St. Pete, Captain Harry Connor of Hook'em Harry Charters um, reports that the mangrove and yellowtail bite have been really good in 75 to 100 feet of water around ledges, the pipeline jug junctions, and the migration areas. 
He's using a light spinning car, uh, light spinning tackle with 15 feet of 20 pound fluorocarbon. Now he's either freelining these guys or lightly weighting them and putting them back in the current. He's using small pieces of shrimp, cut pilchards, cut fish pilchards, or cut frozen pilchards, or cut sardines. And he's freelining those back, like I said, in the current. Moving a little further north up the coast, Captain Jimbo Keith of Saltwater Assassin Fishing Charters out of Cedar Key reports that the snapper bite up there has been a little tough the past week, but a few boats made it out on that last Saturday and reported some nice red snapper in that 50 to 60 foot range on ledges and rock piles on cut sardines. Excuse me, those were mangrove snapper, not red snapper. Moving a little bit further up the coast, Captain JP with Captain JP Charters out of Apalachicola reports a big red snapper bite right now has been really good around that 140 to 170 foot range. Step ranges um, using whole squid on an knocker rig. And I've got a few photos there of some nice west coast snapper. Alright, what about some uh, stuff in shore, bub? I've got Captain Rob Gord of St. Pete reports the redfish bite right now. Most of the fish have been underneath the mangroves on the, hardest part, the highest part of the tide to escape the heat. You want to fish the shadow lines with cut bait, cut ladyfish, and cut pinfish. Moving a little bit further up the coastline, Dunedin to Caladesi, kind of want to do the same thing, fish underneath the mangroves. Moving a little bit further up the coast, Captain Jimbo Key of the Saltwater Assassin Fishing Charters out of Cedar Key reports the redfish bite's been really hot. He's catching most of his fish on cut mullet. And he's also said right now the top bait artificial-wise has been that skitter walk first thing in the morning. That's been the top hot bait. Also, he's been catching them on the Bass Assassin, Little Boss, so that's been working really good on an 8-pound swim hook. Both baits are really work, working good around the oyster bars. And the key to the red fishing right now has been find the mullet, and you'll find the big red fish. Scout season's still going really good right now, and it's been really easy from 3 to 6 feet, three to six feet of water from the Hernando line all the way up to Stan Hatchie. A little tip for guys that are looking to do it and haven't done it before, if you're looking for basically a Ruffles potato chip down there in your water, start off looking for some clean water, start off really shallow, and look for changes in the turtle grass, and remember to fly those dive flex. All right, thank you so much, Hag. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the northwest region. In short, snook uh, along the beaches and passage, free line, use sardines and pinfish on the outgoing tide and incoming tides, and then offshore snappers over the high, re high relief structure in 30 to 60 feet. <clears throat> Use fresh cut live sardines for bait and use that chum as well. Speaking of chum, hey Tommy, what's going on? Chummy. <laughs> chum. What's right? happening, guys? You're my You're chum. You're hey chum. chum. Hey, it looks like you guys are having fun there tonight. We are. We've got the ladies in the house, got some nice food on set. These Thanks girls are looking so good and they're telling us everything about fishing and it's awesome. That's good. Well, you know what? Hey, the ladies, they're slaying the fish here in the strike zone north region and you know what I'm always excited to have ladies on the boat because as you guys probably know the ladies always seem to catch more fish than the guys do and you know what I know quite a few female fishermen that are as good and if not better than most of the guys that I know now we have all kinds of opportunities for women to get involved in fishing in the strike zone northeast region you know if there are any women out there looking at getting more into fishing there's quite a few fishing clubs that have a bunch of female members that might be a good way to go. Or you might want to just stop into one of the local bait and tackle shops like Strike Zone up in Jacksonville, and they can get you hooked up with more info on both fishing and on those clubs. Now, right now, in short, we have a bunch of jacks that have shown up across the region. Now, they're a great fish to target for anyone. You know, either you're just starting out or even an experienced angler. You can find them on the seawalls near downtown St. Augustine, the canals in Palm Coast, and the banks of the St. Johns River in Jacksonville. Watch for those jacks. Chasing the schools of mullet, all you have to do is look for busting fish across just about any kind of live bait or plug in front of them, and you're gonna hook up. Now, you can also find some huge jacks along the beach in the pokey pods, and I got a photo here. This is Patty Scott with her giant jack cabal that she caught on a fly rod with me out of St. Augustine. That jack shattered that fly rod after about a 30 minute battle. We ended up pretty much having to hand line that thing in for the last few minutes of the fight. Now, Patty, she's quite the angler. She's definitely one of my favorite people to have on the boat. And that was a really cool fish. That is a cool fish. What else you got for me in shore this week, bub? Well, you know, we've got a really good low tide first thing in the morning this weekend. And that means the redfish are gonna be pushed out right along the banks of the ICW throughout the region. 
Now, an easy way to find those reds on the ICW is look for the big schools of finger mullet. Those areas are gonna be holding some nice redfish until the tide really starts to push in. A live and sometimes even better, a cut mullet fished under those schools of bait fish are gonna work really well this time of year. There's also a good bull redfish bite happening in the St. John's River up in Jacksonville. I spoke with Captain Chip Wingo from fishtoflats.com and he tells me they've been chewing pretty good on both the high and low tide from Blunt Island to the ICW in Mayport. Captain Chip says he's fishing the steep drop off in 35 to 50 foot range with half blue crab, cut ladyfish or cut mullet. Now he's using enough weight to get the bait to the bottom and he's gonna use some heavy tackle so we can get those fish to the boat fast because you want to get them revived and let them go as quick as possible. You're going to also want to have a venting tool for those fish and just make sure you know how to properly vent them so they can swim away nice and healthy. <clears throat> those bull reds are running anywhere from 20 to 40 plus pounds. I've got a picture that Captain Ch Chip sent me of his uh, client Tiffany with her first ever redfish and it was one of those big bull redfish. Now moving offshore, you know, the cobia, they're still hanging out offshore in the 120 foot depths on the bigger wrecks and ledges. I spoke with Captain Trey Jones from Got em On Charters and he said those bigger structures are still holding those spawning cobia. Trey said live bait is going to be the key. And you know, there's a bunch of live bait, some nice sardines at Nine Mile Reef out of St. Augustine. So on your way out there, stop and grab some of those baits. He said the cobia, they're coming up off the bottom and a lot of times they're going to follow one of their buddies or any of those other bottom fish you might be catching. They're gonna follow them up to the surface, so have a pitch rod or two ready to go. Now also offshore, you know, coming off this full moon, those mangrove snapper, they're still chewing pretty good. I spoke with Captain Jason Hadges from jhookfishingcharters.com. He says the mangoes, they moved out a little deeper in that 21 fathom depths, but they're still spawning. And most of those fish have come off the bottom because the current's been ripping pretty hard. It's making it a little tough to get them chummed up. Just target those big ledges, use a long fluorocarbon leader with either live or dead sardines. I got one last photo. Captain Jason sent me this. This is Ashley Robbins with one of those monster mangrove snappers she caught with him on the J-hook out of St. Augustine. And that's a big snapper. That snapper. is a big snapper, bro. You I'm gotta gonna tell like you. commit to that snapper. Yeah, you can't be afraid snapper. of it. There All you right. go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Hey, thank you so much this week, Tommy. Thanks, great report. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Strike Zone Northeast region. Bull redfish in St. John's River from Blunt, Blunt Island to Mayport in 35 to 50 feet of water. Fish the bottom with cut crab, ladyfish, or mullet. And then offshore, mangrove snappers out of St. Augustine into 21 fathom depth on big ledges. Look, you're, you're saying like catching on. Snapper. Snapper. Everyone's doing it. I know. You're starting trend. Because it's cool. It, Yes. Like if your, you're like your Costa pants. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm gonna do. If you're from the Central West region, we're coming to you right here on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, Ladies Edition. We'll see y'all in a minute. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevy. Find new roads. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Suffix. The world's most hardcore fishing line. The IGFA, conservation through education. Get your hands wet. Flagler Construction Equipment, your exclusive Takeuchi dealer. And Okuma, inspired fishing. When you're moving a big offshore boat, it's all about thrust and trust. For thrust, nothing compares to the Yamaha purpose-built 5.3 liter V8 Power Pioneer. And for trust, Yamaha's new F350C model becomes the only outboard in its horsepower class to feature a five-year limited warranty. Never settle for less than complete confidence and control in the open water. That's Yamaha V8 Power. Get the best and forget the rest. It's just not made the same anymore. Kick your gas into gear with StarTron. 
Pump up the performance in all of your engines. Cure the problems of ethanol with the power of enzymes. And maximize your mileage every time you drive. Kickstart your engines with StarTron. You each drive a Ford pickup, right? Yes, yes sir. I have a Ford F-150. I've always been a Ford guy. And I have a real treat for you today. Awesome. I'm going to show you a next generation pickup. Let's do this. This new truck now has a corner step built right into the bumper. Super cool. The bed is made of high strength steel, which is less susceptible to punctures than aluminum. Aluminum is great for a lot of things, but maybe not the bed of a truck. And best of all, this new truck is actually <laughs> oh, oh my. the current Chevy Silverado. I'm speechless. <laughs> this puts my poor truck to shame. I tell you, I might be a Chevy guy now. <laughs> yeah. Today's power pole tip is certainly one of the most frequently asked questions that I get. A lot of people say, Captain Rick, I want to ask you, when I decide to get a power pole, do I want to get two poles or do I want to get one pole? Now here's what you need to understand, the pros and the cons of making this decision. When you have one pole, the one thing that happens is that you're going to always seem to drift downwind or down current. And the great thing about having twin power poles is that it allows you to have the great stopping power that you have when you have one but you're also going to have a lot more control it's going to allow you to lock into position and the current won't change your position having two poles will let you key in on exactly where you need to be so that when you're targeting that fish you can create the most perfect presentation so one power pole anchor is always going to stop and hold your boat but two will give you an added advantage for serious angling, just like the pros. The next tip is about the three speed control that you have, and that's today's power pole tip. The StarTron Central West region is last, but certainly not least because Jeff Page always brings the heat. So Jeff, why don't you tell us how the ladies are heating up in your region? Oh. Well, I think you know you fished in my region before. I have, it was pretty heated. Uh-huh, and you know what, Rick and Bree, as you both know from having fished here a few times in my StarTron Central West region, we have lots of lady anglers, young and old, and in between. And we have a lot of different ways that the lady anglers fish. Some from land, some off of piers and bridges, some that like to fish from their kayaks and paddle boards, and then a lot of our ladies not only go with their husbands and their significant others, but they have their own boat. We even have three or four local lady fishing guides in our region, and we also have our annual CCA all-release tournament, which is in April every year, which has its own lady division, and of course the CCA star tournament, which is still going on, which has its own ladies division. And all that being said, we also have a, a traditional Sarasota City annual tarpon tournament, which has been going on for 85 years, and the photo I have tonight is of Miss Alita Tush, owner of CB Saltwater Outfitters. She has won that three out of the last four years, so they named her Tarpon Queen at the Sarasota City Tournament this year. Well, I got to tell you, Jeffrey, when you own a tackle store and you go and you catch the poon like that and defend the title, you deserve to be called the queen, and Alita sure Congrats. is in Sarasota for sure. Congratulations, Alita. All right, what you got for me in shore there, Poppy? Redfish, and like I've been building and building and building, it, I don't know if it's been the rain, Rick, or just the time of the year coming off the full moon, but we've got some more redfish beginning to show up, and I'm getting reports from the guys to the south uh, and to the north. I wouldn't say big schools, but decent numbers of fish are starting to show up in their regular areas. The Manatee River's getting a few. The grass flats on the west side of Sarasota Bay from Buttonwood Harbor south to the moorings, and then down in Charlotte Harbor on the flats out front of Three Sisters Key and Widdens and Catfish Creek, to name a few. Best way to find them is early in the morning when the tides are down. Look for the fish pushing, and you can throw topwater surface plugs like chartreuse bones, skitter walks, or rig that new saltwater assassin salty snack with a 3-0 weedless weighted hook in that snowstorm pattern, 
and try throwing that out in front of them and swimming it past them. As the tide comes in, look for the fish to push up around the mangrove shorelines and oyster bars. Then you can throw cut chunks of ladyfish or live cork, pinfish, or pilchards. My second lady's photo tonight is of my wife, beautiful Lady Di, with her daughter Jensen and a friend of hers, Miss Nikki, with a nice red fish they got. All right, let's go offshore, Bubba. Offshore, uh, the first species permit. Uh, the permit bite remains very consistent, and Rick, it's due to the weather has just been beautiful. Haven't had any big seas since that tropical depression, and the permits are showing up out there on those wrecks and reefs up on top early in the morning. Seven to 11 miles has been the range, and the guys have been dipping their crabs on that afternoon outgoing tide with this strong moon and then saving them overnight and getting out there in the day. If the current's strong or there's a little bit of a chop, they've been adding a split shot to it to get it down. But all the captains I've talked to have been averaging four or five permits a trip, and the fish are averaging 12 to 20 pounds. And my last photo tonight is of Miss Megan Kelly, Kelly Hornick, with Captain Harrison Hodges with a nice permit she got. And my final species is red snapper with the recreational season being remaining open through the weekends till the first week of September. Lots of anglers have been getting out, scoring real good on the American reds. The key has been getting out in at least 85, I suggest 100 feet of water. Any hard bottom ledges seem to be holding good snappers. Pretty much the same area you're going to fish your red grouper and gags. And they seem to be eating the live pinfish a little bit better than the frozen uh, sardines. Our standard bottom rig or a knocker rig works real well. And real quick, before I close, don't forget, on the 24th at Daiquiri Deck, I got my uh, Miss Bree and Captain Rick coming down here to the Daiquiri Deck. All right, Captain Page, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Daiquiri Deck Central West hot spots inshore. Mangrove snapper, pretty much in all the inlets and passes along the grass flats throughout the entire region. Smaller white baits and free line shrimp are going to be the best bet for those mangoes. And then offshore, permit remains strong on all the near shore wrecks and reefs, 5 to 11 mile range. Uh, you want a free line of crab or a big shrimp are going to be your best bets for those guys. Oh, Rick, look at you up here with all the ladies. I know. I, I like the way this looks. Amazing. Surrounded by beautiful women. Uh, exactly. Bring it. Okay, everyone in the Startron Central West, calm down, West region, listen up, because Rick, Captain Page, and myself, as he mentioned, will be having a good old time on August 24th from 6 to 9 at Daiquiri Deck in Sarasota. So come join us for amazing food, a little Jägermeister, and a ton of giveaways. Oh, and maybe a daiquiri or two, Rick? Maybe. maybe. Two or three Maybe or four. Maybe two or three or four. Yep. <laughs> All right, well, Rick, we've had our fun. And Ladies Day is almost done, but guys and gals, stick around for just a minute or two and you'll find out what fish will be belonging to you. Next I'm a week. poet and I didn't know it. That's right. <laughs> you each drive a Ford pickup, right? Yes, yes sir. I have a Ford F-150. I've always been a Ford guy. I have a real treat for you today. Awesome. I'm going to show you a next generation pickup. Let's do this. This new truck now has a corner step built right into the bumper. Super cool. The bed is made of high strength steel, which is less susceptible to punctures than aluminum. Aluminum is great for a lot of things, but maybe not the bed of a truck. And best of all, this new truck is actually <laughs> oh, 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 my. the current Chevy Silverado. <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> this puts my poor truck to shame. I tell you, I might be a Chevy guy now. <laughs> yeah. The ultimate predator has evolved again. Now, Yamaha VMAX SHO Performance is prowling the waters in four hungry, exciting new models. With their four valves per cylinder and double overhead cam fuel injected design, these advanced four stroke predators are taking performance to a whole new level. Vicious, lean, efficient. VMAX SHO. The pack is growing. When you're paid to put fish in the boat, you don't mess around with the thing that puts fish in the boat. Always use the best line. Thanks for tuning in to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram to keep up with our captains, contests, and appearances. You never have to miss a show. 
You can find full episodes, special segments, and updated fishing reports from your region right on our homepage. Just head to Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report.com for everything you need to know to stay hooked up. Okay, everyone, get ready for next week because we are talking Wahoo! Woohoo! Woohoo! That's gonna be fun. I can't do it with my voice right now. Tune in Thursday, Friday, Saturday, check your local listings. Taylor, this I looks like amazing. It does look good. I can't wait. They told us not to touch the plates. I know it's plates. so hard. <laughs> so this is the best the studio's ever of. smelled. Thank you. Right. Hey, you know plate. what else we need to do is, Betty, you and all the ladies, let's go fishing. We appreciate you guys very, very much for coming in and supporting the Lady Show and what you guys do for exposing ladies to yes. the opportunity to be out there and doing your thing. So we appreciate that very much, right, Brie? awesome. Yes, we do, of course. And we thank Amanda yeah. and Heather for coming on set with us tonight and experiencing this with us and telling us all of your experiences. Thank you all for joining in. We're going to eat this, and we will see Bye you next guys. week. Ladies, go fishing. Bye. <laughs>